Hey up everyone, I'm Miniman and today I'm going to be showing you all my creation for this year's Halloween event in Disney Infinity. So today I'm going to show off a pretty big and detailed build that I have created. Now I will mention that I was running pretty low in the memory department during the creation process of this, so that means I haven't been able to add in as much function as I would have liked to otherwise. So the original idea I was going for was a Dead Rising like experience to fit the Halloween theme but in a bit more of a silly way, but due to the memory issues I'll have to show off the more that I designed instead with a little bit of symbiote combat towards the end. So I'll head down into spark mode to enter the mall as the front doors are locked up. So here we are inside the mall, with many details in the hallway and shops along each way. So let's have a tour around the mall, and if any of you would like to come up with a name for the mall then feel free to comment it. So our first stop is a sports themed shop, with many different sports items, fruit and a trophy, and even a punching bag. And I also included a hanging bar, which if you hold on to for too long, uh, the, yeah, that happens. Anyways, across the hall we have our next shop, which I suppose is more of a pharmacy as that's what I tried to aim for here. This area specifically takes inspiration from the pharmacy location you go to get Zombrex in Dead Rising 2, although mine has a lot less detail than that specific store. Moving on to the next shop just before the main lobby, we have a high quality fashion shop. As can be told by the fancy floor, the multiple dresses here on display, alongside some crowns, and we also have Cinderella's glass slippers, I don't know how those got there. Now moving out into the main lobby of the mall, and this location is really pretty, as it includes a fountain in the middle with some marvellous statues to see, and some beautiful architecture. And here's an interesting fact about this architecture, you see, this architecture here was originally a staircase as the mall was going to have a second layer but the enemy struggled to get up it during testing, so I decided to scrap the second floor entirely and change the staircase into this nice architecture you see before yourself, which I also decided to mirror at the other side. Anyway, now we are entering the first of my favourite locations in the mall, and the first of these locations is the supermarket, which has a huge range of items for browsers to select from, such as drinks from vending machines, many different fruits and foods, and some other items that I just decided to throw in here. And at the tills, there's actually a gnome ready to serve some customers, as everyone else has run away from what was supposed to be a symbiote-ridden mall. Now exiting the supermarket, we can either go left or right, we're going to go left first into our next shop. So our next shop is actually more of a cafe, and I was aiming for a bit of a work cafe here, with multiple computers that can be used, although obviously it also ended looking very futuristic because of this choice. The next shop down the hall of the mall is a bookshop, which is filled to the absolute brim with bookshelves, a stack of books behind the counter, a big newspaper stack, and the Dark old. Yeah, I don't know how that one got in there. And the final shop in this hallway is an antique treasure shop with loads of precious goodies to feast your eyes upon, even including the Infinity Gauntlet and the Genie's Lamp. I also included these as guardian torches to fit the aesthetic. I think they actually look quite good. Now coming back through the hall and past the break station, we enter my absolute favourite location that the mall has to offer, and that is the outdoor park area, which is filled to the brim with plant life, a path to follow, statues along the path trail, and a small lake with some parrots hanging off a tree. And another thing this park has is hidden behind the beautiful nature, is the mall's very own room of wonders housing some gold, gemstones, and a not-so-hidden Mickey. And finally, coming to the other side of the park, you'll actually find the only item that you can pick up and use in the entire map, that item being Wart's legendary sword in the stone. Now entering back to the mall, we'll turn right to our next shop. The next shop is more of a restaurant, with plenty of places to sit for an enjoyable meal, with some of the tables being a bit more fancy in style, and of course, we have lots of food behind the counter to be prepared. 
Next up down the hall is another favourite location of mine in this mall, and that is the arcade. And as you can see, it's absolutely filled with games to play on all sides, and a place for snacks in the middle of the room. I've even put some Tron materials in the corner to sell more of a retro arcade feeling. Next up down the hall is a, well I suppose it's kind of a storage room, with a few bits and bobs and an X on the floor, uh... Anyway, the next shop is a bit of an oddity shop, including a painting canvas, the unicorn pot from Tangled, gemstones, Cusco's holiday home structure, a clock, and the book of Vishanti behind a counter... So, wait, do they like run the shop or something? And with that, we reach our final shop, which is another bookshop, and this one is a little emptier than the other one. Not a whole lot to say here, really. And the final location across the hall are the... Toilets. Yeah, yeah, toilets. It's just toilets. I mean, what were you guys expecting? Like, were you expecting something impressive to finish off this tour with? Nah, I'm sorry to disappoint you, it's just the bathrooms. However, I did say I would also include some symbiote fights as well, and some of you may have seen the targets around some of the areas we've already been to. And this is just to spawn in some symbiotes within the areas and despawn them if needed. I also got some of these fights with a more nighttime sky, and the mall still looks really nice under the blanket of night. Even the outdoor area does, and by the way, the outdoor area is one of my favourite areas, so I guess that's kind of bias. And with that said, that is the end of this creation. It's not fully what I intended, but the memory limit prevented me from adding in other things that really could have helped cement in more of the Dead Rising experience, but I suppose the more will do for now. Thank you all for tuning in to my creation everyone, and feel free to share the name you'd like to give them all in the comments below. And if you like this video, feel free to give it a like as well, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this event.